Hey everyone, my name is Quinn Custledge and I'm a professional VR developer. Today I'm going to be going over the Meta XR Simulator, which is essentially a plugin for Unreal Engine that allows you to develop VR content without actually needing to have your headset plugged in or on. It's a really handy tool that I've been using to develop more at length VR games, so that way I don't have to constantly put on my headset and take it off in order to do testing. It's been really useful and I think you guys are going to love it and we'll be using it in future tutorials moving forward. So I wanted to make a full video going over it, how to install it and how to use it. So that way when we use it in future tutorials, you know what it is and what's going on. Here I have my basic Unreal Engine template inside of Unreal. It's basically just the vanilla VR template with a few extra mechanics added on top of it that I've been working on over the past few months, years, years. <laughs> what we're going to do is add the plugin on top of it and I'm gonna show you guys how to use it with the existing plugin and the different ways that you can use it via controller, mouse and keyboard, or actually plugging in your headset and using the controllers while not having to wear the headset. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to close this project and I'm going to pull up my browser of choice. And what I want to do is navigate to the uh, MedXR developer site. Basically, what we're looking for is the Unreal Engine 5 integration. This is the MedXR plugin for Unreal Engine. We're looking for version 78.0. We're currently doing this in 5.5.4. There is no build of this plugin for 5.6 or later. So you must do this tutorial and use this tool in 5.5.3. Eventually, Meta will release a plugin that is compatible with later versions of Unreal, but right now they don't have it, so this is what we're stuck dealing with. I wish I had a better answer for why. I will include a link to this in the description of this video, but all you need to do is download this, and then accept the license and download. Then you're going to navigate to your downloads folder, and we need to actually unzip this into our Unreal Engine plugin folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this and uh, right click in order to extract all. Um, and we want to put this in a very specific folder location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Rouse, and I'm going to go to where I've installed Unreal Engine on my computer. I put mine on a partition drive that is not my main drive, just because I prefer to keep everything separate. Um, and I'm looking for my Unreal 5.5, which is right here. So if I click into Unreal 5.5, I then click on Engine, and then I click on Plugins, and then I'm looking for a folder called Marketplace. If you don't have a folder called Marketplace in this folder, which is Plugins, you're gonna need to make one. It's just something that you wouldn't have if you haven't followed any other tutorials that had you put a plugin exactly where it is. So what you're gonna do is just do, uh, you know, control shift new, and then you'll create a new folder like so. But anyway, you wanna unzip it inside of this marketplace folder. So here are my other plugins that I've installed. I've got the one for my 3D mouse, I've got the substance plugin, and then I also have the MetaHuman 5.5 plugin. So I'm just gonna select this folder and I wanna unzip it right here. Then I just press extract and wait for it to fully unzip everything inside of this folder, which is all the plugin files directly into my marketplace plugins folder. Now that plugin is installed into Unreal Engine so we can activate it inside a project. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to start a fresh project. So I will open up my Unreal editor and wait for shaders to compile and do all the fun stuff that they like to do. I'm using the Quinn Custledge virtual reality template. This uh, you can get on Gumroad with a link in my description. It's got procedural grip, thumbstick locomotion, and physics on the hands as well as some other little things added in there for, you know, VR game development. And I'm actively working on adding more things to it. I'm gonna name this QKVT XR Sim for the tutorial purposes and create the project. And now I wait for Unreal to do its thing and compile the rest of my shaders. Okay, now that we have opened up our fresh Quinn Custledge virtual reality template, we need to go to edit and plugins because we have to actually activate the plugin that we installed to the engine. So what I'm gonna do is in the search bar up here, I'm gonna type in meta and I'm gonna spell it correctly because I'm not an idiot. And then I'm gonna do the Meta XR plugin. And you'll see that it's new because we just installed it. And what that's gonna do is prompt a restart of the engine. So you'll just click restart now. Make sure you save if you were doing this on top of a pre-existing project. Um, usually it will prompt you to do so. Now that the Meta XR plugin is installed, you're gonna see two things at the top of the screen. The first thing is the Meta XR tools. This is where we do like the whole project setup if we were gonna package it to the Quest as a standalone application. But what we're interested for this tutorial is on the right here, which is the Meta XR simulator. In the past, we'd actually have to install this as a separate element, but uh, after the plugin version of 76, it's now just included with the plugin, like bundled inside of it. So all we need to do to actually use this plugin now is uh, click on the Meta XR simulator, um, make sure that it's updated to the latest version, which it is, because we downloaded 0.78. And uh, what we want to do is click that little checkbox there, basically saying like, Meta XR Simulator, yes, we want to use it. And then we're going to go over to the uh, little three bars at the top of the screen here, and we'll notice that 3D Preview 
our like VR preview is now not grayed out um, because I don't have a headset plugged in right now. Uh, I only really want to use this um, as you know my development tool, so I don't have to put my headset on and off when I'm developing different content. And this would be great for doing things like levels or other things. So I'm going to click play, and what it's going to do is it's going to launch the Meta XR simulator. Now I want you guys to think of this as like an emulator of the Quest of this headset running on your PC by itself. It allows you to interact with your game as if you were playing it through a headset, but you're using mouse and keyboard controller or actually just the Quest, the Quest controllers. And I'll show you how to set that all up in a second. It's gonna tell you a few things about like what it does. A lot of times they update this and there will be new features. So it's kind of important to pay attention to that and make sure you read you know, the documentation, which has been left available in the uh, description. But what we're looking at right now is a couple things that come straight away. So when you're moving around, you're gonna notice that I have thumbstick enabled in my project, so I'm able to move around freely, but it, you can also actually just toggle use um, thumbstick locomotion and it's like a different version of it if you're just using a teleport project or you're using a base project, which is also pretty cool. Um, but then there's uh, like, you know, aiming around. When you right click, you actually use that to aim. If you want to grip something, you're going to double click the middle mouse and that'll cause your controllers to grip. If you want to activate the index finger, you'll click the left mouse button, which is like clicking on something normally. And then to release, you just double click the middle mouse button again. If you're too tall and you want to lower yourself, you press the F button and that uh, brings you down. And if you want to go up, you press the R button. Basically imagine yourself like a floating pawn that you can control. You can also press Q to rotate and E to rotate the opposite direction. So you can use that if you needed to like, I don't know, be like totally tilted or something. Anyway, you can use that to go up to objects and pick them up. And I have physics enabled on this project. So like if I take this and I try to like put it up against a wall, my hands will actually get stuck on the wall as you can see right here. And you can do a lot of other things with this, but this is just like the basic control. So essentially what I can do is play my VR game and test very specific things out without having to put my headset on. It's really nice. You can also do things like record gameplay. So if you wanted to record, you know, a specific event happening, and then you could use that for debugging or doing different tasks, that is also helpful. And then you can stop that record, it'll save it. There's multiple different interaction modes. So you can use like a new point and click mode, which I haven't done much testing with, but it's an option and it'll show you the full logs as well. This is where you're gonna see any weird errors that might be happening inside of the pond. So you can control it with your mouse and keyboard, but you can also plug in an Xbox controller and use that as well. So if you plug in an Xbox controller with you know a cord, and I would use just like a wired Xbox controller, they're like 30 bucks on Amazon, I can share a link to one. Um, you can then launch the simulator again, and if you go to inputs, device, that's not what we wanted. So basically, I have my Xbox controller plugged in, and if I want to use that instead, I'm now using my left trigger to grip. I'm now using these buttons to like move around and rotate. If I press the right button, the right bumper, it also grips. Um, the right joystick click is thumbs. The left joystick activates the sprint functionality that I have programmed in. So let's say like I had something gripped like this with the controller and I wanted to just use, you know, the controller to control one hand. I can click the headset up at the top here and the controller left. And now I'm just moving the controller left. So I can use that to rotate an object or do other things with it. And then I needed to like, you know, make it go down. I can do that as well with the F key. And then you can actually like customize the controller controllers and how they work a little bit more as well and I'm still kind of looking into that but this is like a really useful tool just for like very simple um, testing really quickly you can use it for things like walking around a map and interacting with things and then you don't have to put on your headset and sit with it on for 20 minutes to play the same level over and over again which would have been really helpful when I was working on my first game I really wish that I had used this tool or it was available because I don't think it was but as you can see here, I'm like testing out my physics with the controller. So I'm like taking my hand and I'm having it rotate around on the surface to see how it interacts with things. And it's just kind of funny to see, you know, how the hand glitches out depending on what inputs are happening on it. And then I can also select the left controller and I can move around and have it grip this item. And now it's here, moving this item around. Basically, it's just a nice tool to remove the need 
for you to have a headset plugged in and put it on every time you test. The final way that you can interact with this simulator is actually using the controllers and then placing your headset on your desk facing towards you. You also have to go into the uh, MetaQuest developer hub and disable the proximity sensor, which basically is the little thing that detects that your forehead is there and lets the headset know that it doesn't go need to go to sleep when it's on your face. So you basically just have to override that inside of the MetaQuest developer hub, which is right down here. You'll go up to device manager and then you can turn that off for up to eight hours, which is what I just did. Um, and then once we you know, are ready, we can launch the MetaQuest simulator. And here we have that application just sitting here. And then we can go to inputs. And what we're looking for is um, uh, specifically connect physical quest controllers and we'll refresh it. It's gonna see our quest there. That's our quest ID. We do connect physical controllers and it wants to run an application on the quest headset, which is now going to do. Um, and now if you look, um, I actually have my controllers uh, working. And so now I can mess around with different things. And if I want to reset it, I can just um, press like this reset button and it'll actually reset them. I've noticed that this does not work as well as it was advertised to be when I was looking at the simulator in the first place. Like it kind of works, but also the tracking is somewhat terrible. And I don't know if it's just because of the way that I maybe have the headset set up. Um, it just doesn't seem to understand what I'm trying to do. Like the tracking is just really not good. Um, and I moved it to a bunch of different places around my desk. And like, I just wanted to show it to you as an option, but I will just be honest with you, it does not work very well. Um, I would just use the mouse and keyboard or the controller, but if you're testing out things like, you know, grip poses or something, or just like general movement throughout a scene, and maybe you just have to like push a button on the wall. I mean, like it can work for that. Um, you know, basically like replaying through a level a bunch of times is not ideal. Um, so, you know, this is an option, but it is not the best option out of the three that I've shown in this tutorial. If I'm like doing something wrong with setting up the tracking, feel free to let me know. Um, but I follow the documentation to the best of my ability and it's just like uh, kind of weird. And that wraps up this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, my next tutorial will be Force Grab using the controllers. There's going to be both a Half-Life Alex and a Boneworks style Force Grab tutorial. We're going to combine them all into one and it will be put into the master template as well as released as a separate template as well on Gumroad. And obviously as an Unreal tutorial on YouTube for free. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the support. I'm really hoping that my face gets fixed soon and I am excited to see you guys in the next video.